Hi and welcome back to a new video. The footage which we will look at now is actually nine months old already and it took quite a long time to finish this video project and that's why we'll just start with the first part now and then be back in a few minutes. Hi and welcome back to a follow-up video to our Intel 4004 journey. A few weeks ago we did already a video regarding the first commercially available microprocessor which were basically celebrating the 50 year anniversary. And then my original plan was to decap one of the 4004 CPUs, remove the die from the center, send it to Tescan to get some transistor analysis, SEM pictures and all this stuff, but then turns out it's not that easy to decap one of these chips, at least not for me. And then David got in contact with us. And David is a former blue batch Intel engineer, which means that he worked at Intel and they gifted this to him which is an Intel 4004 anniversary clock celebration thing. Pretty awesome. It feels very massive, this thing. And it's a clock that has an Intel 4004 die sitting on top, which is awesome because this means that this die was never packaged. Also makes it a lot easier in regards that we don't have to use any kind of acid. We should not like damage the surface in addition, which is great. But before we send this to Tescan and obviously also disassemble this, Let's just put it under a microscope. I decided to first remove the glass. This should make it much easier for the microscope to zoom in further. But let's look at this first again. It says Intel 4004, world's first microprocessor. 25 years anniversary. Sometimes you can find these on eBay for like, I don't know, 200 to 400 euro roughly. And I hope because there's like a tiny hole on the bottom that this should help to remove the glass, otherwise this thing is quite massive, I'm not sure how to open it. Let's see. Let's just try this. Well, that's easy, but it's also removing the entire clock. Damn. This seems to be the back side of the chip. Not sure how to disassemble this. That looks much better now. This video is sponsored by Hetzner and their dedicated root servers. The AX line offers a wide range of servers depending on your required CPU power, storage and memory. It starts with the AX41, which features a Ryzen 5 3600 with 64GB of memory and two 512GB NVMe SSDs for €34 Euro per month. The AX101 would come with 5950X, 128GB of ECC memory, and two 3.84 terabyte NVMe SSDs for 94 euro per month. Of course, fully configurable with the OS you need, additional storage and gigabit connection. Find out more in the link below. Just have to align it under the microscope. There we have the 12, the 4004. Now I have to sharpen this a bit. Awesome. What you can see right now is about 120 times magnified. And even if you think, okay, this is 120 times magnified, this must be extremely small. This is still very, very big comparing this to any nowadays CPU. If we would zoom in 120 times on a nowadays CPU, we would not be able to see anything. We're looking at the top layer, which is just wires. There's no like transistor you could see directly from the top and all those pads surrounding the chip, those are the contact pads, should be something like 18 for the 18 pins on the CPU. And if you just think about this, like a 12900K with 1700 contact pins, it would not be possible to ha have them all like on the edge of the chip, otherwise the chip would be like this big. But yeah, back then, because you only had so like, like less pins, this was possible to do. Also, if you look at those like specific structures on the side next to the pins. Those are buffers, like output buffers here, here, here and here, for example. The center area right here should be the control logic. Bottom right, right here is like an 8-bit register, like 8 times 8-bit register, for example. The good thing about the 4004 is that there are so many documentations available online. So if you want to read up more about this, like how it works and everything, there is plenty of documentation available. One more interesting detail is on bottom right, we have the Intel logo with a 71, 
which means that this IC was actually produced in 1971. So this is one of the early 4004 chips because this was in production for several years. And also on the side, we can see 4004 marking. You're now inspecting the bottom right corner with the Intel logo, 200 times magnified roughly. It's still amazing that you can see traces on a CPU from like 50 years ago. But even already then it was pretty tiny. I mean, considering that this is 50 years old, it's quite amazing what they were able to do back then. You can also see like the position underneath my cursor. There are additional circuits and stuff, traces, but that's the limit of this microscope. It's not the best microscope. It's just for usually for solder inspections and stuff. 4004 logo on the right. Still quite nice, but we will now send this to Tescan and then I guess we will have some very amazing shots. Now about nine months later, we will finally be able to take a look at the images which we got from Tescan. Because first of all, when we got those images from Tescan, they were also not quite sure what we were actually looking at. Then I sent some of these images to some of my Intel contacts. And I mean, they were not there when the Intel 4004 was made. And that's why it was also quite difficult for them to know what exactly they're looking at. And then I just had to spend a lot more time on doing research, like how was the CPU built? How did they build transistors back then? Because like publicly, there are no information available about like how the CPU is built. There are no images of transistors, no images of layers, which made it quite difficult to figure out what we're looking at. In the first image, we have the chip right from above. It's pretty much the same angle as what we've seen with the USB microscope, but with the scanning electron microscope. And that's also why we cannot see any kind of color, but just grayscale. If you want to know more how the scanning electron microscope works to get such pictures or images, then I would recommend that you check out some links in the description because we already performed a lot of videos about this topic and there you can find more information on how it works and how you can get these images. What you can see now is the first layer of the CPU, which means that it's just purely traces. And the traces inside the Intel 4004 were made out of aluminium. Whereas if you compare it with the nowadays CPU, they would be made from copper. And the traces would be so small that with this type of magnification, nothing would be visible. By the way, on the bottom right, there is always this scale. In this case, it's one millimeter. And this also allows to get a comparison for the die size. In this case, we measured about 4.3 times 3.2 millimeter, which would equal 13.8 square millimeters. And just for comparison reasons, a 12900K, very recent CPU, has about 16 times more die size, but at the same time, it has 35 million times more transistors. Just completely insane. And again, the area you can see here, we already looked at this under the USB microscope. You can see these pads, which are for making the contact to the CPU itself, similar to what you would have like a LGA or PGA socket nowadays. And next to them, you have those tiny loops, which are part of the output buffer. About five times more magnified, we can see the traces of the CPU. And first look, you might even think this looks very similar to a PCB. But if you look even closer, you will notice that there are at least two layers of traces over each other, which would be different from a PCB. And those square points at the end of the traces, those are either connections to a different trace or forming a connection for the layer underneath, which would be the transistor. Tescan now made some further cross sections for us to look at. So those are basically cuts from the side of the die. And for this, they're using a focused ion beam to cut holes into the chip. And at this point, if you don't know what a focused ion beam is or how it works, I would recommend that you check out the older videos in the description. We already explained this in previous videos more in detail. If we now use the ion beam to cut through one of the connections formed by the trace above, and in this case, you will see that the trace forms a connection to the lower layer, which in this case would be the silicon. If we zoom in further, you will see that both are made out of different materials, aluminum and silicon. That's why we see a little bit of different grayscales on both. The only problem was though that at this point we just didn't know what we were actually looking at and that's why we decided to just have more areas where we are cutting with the focused ion beam through the material to get more cross sections. In this image you will recognize some parts again such as the trace made out of aluminium in the center 
and the via on the left of the trace. But what is interesting here is that the trace and the via are forming a connection to polysilicon. By knowing which material we're looking at, we also know or can estimate what part of the CPU or transistor we're looking at. For example, for the Intel 4004, the traces are made out of aluminum and the gate, like the switching part of the transistor, is made out of polysilicon. Polysilicon, you can also call polycrystalline silicon, can be deposited by different techniques like PVD on top of the wafer, for example. But to make it a little bit easier to understand, we will now look at this schematic image of a PMOS or NMOS transistor. In the Intel 4004, they only used PMOS though, so that's the part on the left. That means that source and drain were made out of P-doped silicon inside an N-doped silicon well. The gate is laying on top out of polysilicon. Now if you apply a voltage to the gate, electrons can flow from source to drain. Now the thing is all the images we have from TESCAN, we are looking at from a 90 degree angle. That means if you normally have your source and drain and your gate is put on top, we are looking at this from the side. Like we cut through from the side from a 90 degree angle. So that's not the usual view you would have from like a planar transistor. Magnifying further into the cross section, we can see the aluminum contact or via totally on the left, forming a connection to the gate of the transistor. In the right area, we see the gate, which is made out of polysilicon. And it's sitting very close to the actual silicon, that what you would probably know as the wafer. And that would be only the bottom part, what you can see in the image. Everything above, like the aluminum traces and the gate, all of those are deposited or like etched using different methods such as PVD, which I mentioned earlier. The very first layer between the silicon and the gate would be formed out of silicon dioxide. If you are wondering how we know which material we are looking at in a cross section, that's due to the EDX process. Basically, to explain it very simply, you're shooting some electrons on a chemical element and this is emitting an X-ray radiation. And this radiation is very specific for every chemical element. So if you're shooting your electron beam, let's say on phosphorus or on silicon, they will emit a very specific uh, radiation. And this way you can detect which element is at which position. And this way we can tell that, for example, those violet elements would be the traces made out of aluminum. Green colored areas would contain a lot of oxygen. And this would mean that it's probably some kind of insulating layer such as the dark green layer underneath with silicon dioxide. The very thick teal layer on the bottom, that would be the silicon wafer itself. And then there is another like teal colored, very tiny layer in between that would be the polysilicon of the transistor gate. The reddish colored layer in the center would contain silicon dioxide and phosphorus. Unfortunately, we don't have a cross section like 90 degree rotated that would cut through source and drain. But I think that's not really that relevant. But apart from that, just looking at these images and then also going back, imagining that we already did like like 10900K, I think also 3950X images, you can compare them and just look at the different scales of the images and then you will be impressed how much tinier the actual recent technology is compared to this. By the way, we also listed and hosted all of these images as download in the zip file on my website. I will try to put the link in the description. So if you want to look this in a bit more time and also there are more images you can actually look at than what we showed in the video, then feel free to download them. There are also some quite interesting images where Tess can put the layout where you can see, for example, VCC and ground over some of the SEM images. And then you can somehow see how some of those SEM um, visible traces are VCC or ground. If we now look at this last image, it shows a trace of the Intel 4004 and a width of about six micrometers. And already that is about four to five times smaller than the length of the gate of the transistor. And now to have one last comparison, if you look at this trace with six micrometers of width, the gate is about like four to five times longer on the Intel 4004. But if we go back to the trace, which is four to five times smaller, on this width nowadays, you would have about 200 to 300 entire transistors. But then again, we cannot really compare it. That's what we already highlighted in multiple videos before, because what we just saw was a 2D transistor, a planar transistor. But nowadays you have much more evolved technologies. You have the FinFET transistors and for the future also like gate all around transistors. Everything is 3D. And that's why you cannot just simply compare a width with an amount of transistors or like how complex they're built. That's something completely different. Okay, so thanks again to Tesken for giving us access to these very amazing images. And I hope you enjoyed this video, even if it was 
quite technical maybe. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.